السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه والتابعين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين وبعد We praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala We send blessings and salutations upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam his entire household, all his companions, we ask Allah to bless them all, subhanahu wa ta'ala, and to bless every single one of us. Brothers and sisters, a very young companion of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, one who had already accepted him as a Nabi before seeing him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, may Allah's peace and blessings be upon them all. Anas ibn Malik radiyallahu an. He was only 10 years old when Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had entered Medina Munawwara. But let's listen to what happened before that. He was a young boy. His father had passed away under certain circumstances. And his mother was a well-known believer from amongst those who believed in the earlier days when Mus'ab ibn Umayr radiallahu anhu was sent to al Madina al-Munawwara. So she was from Medina Munawwara and he was born in al Madina al-Munawwara. Anas ibn Malik ibn Nadr al-Ansari radiyallahu anhu. And this young boy, as he grew up, he only heard words of love from his mother about Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and about Islam and about how good Islam's teachings are, how beautiful Islam's teachings are and how they would result in his success. So she always praised Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam so much so that from a very young age, Anas ibn Malik, he always told his friends that one day I want to just go to Mecca to meet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You know, young boys talking, they want to see their hero, subhanallah. And they say, no, we'll travel all the way to Mecca and I want to go there. And I just want to meet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam because he used to get so happy talking about him, repeating whatever his mother was telling him to his own friends, subhanallah. And this was from a few years before the hijrah, just a few years before the hijrah. Young boy, seven, eight years old, and this had started. So his mother, her name was Ar-Rumaysa bint Malhan or Al-Rumaysa bint Malhan. Two ways of pronouncing it actually, but she was also known as Umm Sulaym radiallahu anha. She was a woman whose story is amazing. Perhaps one of the days we might dedicate some time for some of the female companions of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as well. So Anas ibn Malik radiallahu anhu says, when we heard that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was about to enter Medina Munawwara, we were so excited. We were little children and the children used to tell each other, hey, he's arriving today. So we used to go to the outskirts and wait until the evening and then come back. These were just rumors. But they were so excited, they used to go back the next day. Hey, he's coming today. And every one of the children used to go out to the outskirts and they used to watch and look and excited movement. They used to see little things. There he is, there he is. And yet there was nothing happening and they would come back. And he says, we got so much joy by doing this. Yet one day, the men started saying, today is the day that Muhammad sallallahu and Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu an is that they are coming. So he knew this is the day because now the older people are talking. Up to now, it was just the children and we were all getting excited. So he says, we would go out in the day excited, come back in the evening sad to say another day is gone and he hasn't yet come. So that day they saw the men went to the outskirts. The, the boys from amongst the children rushed out as well. And the little girls and the women, they went onto the sides of the paths and the tops of the roofs and so on, the rooftops. And they wanted to watch, see Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa come through. And subhanallah, he came. And Anas ibn Malik radiallahu anhu says, I tried to get a peep of my hero sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he is the hero of every one of us. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And when I saw him, I was so excited. It was the happiest day in my entire life. The happiest day in my life. I've never ever had a happier day than that even though I was only 10 years old when this happened. And I was so excited because to me, my dream was fulfilled. Here is the man. We've heard so much about him and I'm so fortunate to be able to see him. So what happened is something interesting. The people of, from amongst the Ansar were coming to Muhammad wasallam, offering help and giving him certain things and helping in this way and that way and whatever way they could. But the mother of Anas ibn Malik, she brought 
Anas ibn Malik with her. As Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa now, you know, he was settled a little bit in Medina Munawwara, and she came and says, Oh, Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa people are giving you things and so on. I have nothing to give you. I have nothing to give you, but I would like to give you my son, Anas ibn Malik. He was an orphan. Anas ibn Malik, I want to give this son to you and let him serve you completely. He will be your servant from this day on. And Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa felt the genuineness in the mother. Because obviously, if someone is not genuine, nothing like this would have happened. Genuineness, the words she used, the respect she had. And he looked at the young boy, his eyes were twinkling. Basically, he was so excited. He was so happy. And Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa knew that this young boy, 10 years old, is looking forward to serving. So he, you know, he passed his hand on the head of Anas ibn Malik radiallahu an as a young boy. He smiled at him, he looked at him, and he felt the warmth. And Anas ibn Malik radiallahu an who says, I felt so loved by Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa And he says, he accepted me as a servant. And I stayed with him up to the day he passed away. That was 10 whole years, subhanallah. So what was the virtue of this man? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allowed him to enter the, com- the company of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa in a way that nobody else had entered. He was with him every time of the day and the night. He served him. He knew things about him that no one else knew. He knew his habits. He knew his innermost habits. And he knew the way he treated his family. He knew every single movement. You know, today if you have someone serving you in your home, they watch you 24-7. They know everything about you. For them to say, hey, this person I work for is really a good person. That is something grand and great. I hope and I pray that those who serve us can be from amongst those who bear witness for us and not against us. So Anas ibn Malik says, I noticed so many things in Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And I want to pause for a moment. Because this deep private life of Muhammad sallallahu had to come out to all of us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave Anas ibn Malik an age that no other companion saw. He passed away when he was aged 103 years old. Anas ibn Malik. So he might not have been the last companion to pass away, but he was definitely one who was given the oldest in age, meaning the, the, the most in age. He was the oldest in, in age when he passed away, 103 years old. And yet when he joined Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa he was only 10 years old. When Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa passed away, he was just over 20 years old, subhanallah. So he says, I noticed something unique. And now these things that we get from Anas ibn Malik, we will not find them from many more. Some of the things we get from him, and this is why the companions, they used to love Anas ibn Malik radiallahu anhu. They used to ask him, Oh Anas, tell us something that nobody knows, just you and Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Then he used to narrate to them a few things. And he did this for years on end, subhanallah. When anyone wanted to rejuvenate and relive the days that they had with Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they would call Anas ibn Malik and tell him, radiallahu anhu, tell us some of what happened. And he would ref- inform them. So he says, Wallahi, something unique. Whenever anyone entered in the company or the presence of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he gave them so much importance that they would leave feeling that they are the closest to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And that happened to everyone who visited. That was a miracle of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. If you find someone visiting you that you really love, you give them importance. But to be able to give similar importance to so many people is not something easy. So Anas ibn Malik says, Wallahi, he was a man who was very, very loving, very kind. He had a soft heart in the sense that he was so welcoming. He would forgive and he was the highest from amongst us in character and conduct. The way he treated his family was unique. Anas ibn Malik says, Wallahi, I served him for 10 whole years. فَمَا قَالَ لِيَ أُفٍ قَطُّ وَمَا قَالَ لِشَيْءٍ صَنَعْتُهُ لِمَا صَنَعْتَهُ I served him for 10 whole years as a servant. Not one day did he pass a comment that hurt me. Not once. Not once. Subhanallah. He didn't say oof. Oof meaning, uh. you know, if we look at someone and we tell them, can you do this? And they take five minutes too long. We would probably say, ah, what do you think you're doing? 
Never did Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa pass a negative comment. Never did he tell me when I did something, why did you do it and why did you do it this way? And when I did not do something, not once did he say, why didn't you do this? He would do it himself with a smile. Subhanallah. Anas ibn Malik radiallahu anhu. He tells us once I was a young boy and I was sent on an errand by Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa Go and do this. And I went and I saw some youngsters of my age playing a game. So I joined them in playing. And in the interim, I forgot what I was told to do. So after a while, someone tapped me on my shoulder whilst I was playing. I looked back and I saw Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa He was smiling at me. Imagine what would we do to a servant whom we sent in the morning to do something. And subhanallah, we go later on and find him playing games. And if we were to tap him slightly, he'd probably die of a heart attack. Hey, I'm dead. That's it. It's over. You know, I'm, I've lost my job. I'm fired. But Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa looked at him and says, Unais. Now, Unais is a sweet version of the word Anas. In the Arabic language, it is known as Tasghir, which, mean, which means to make a name such that it refers to the small version of the same. So if I were to say, for example, Ibnun, which means a son, and if I want to add love to it and make reference to someone who's small and cute, I would say Bunay. So he would not call me Ibni, he would say Ya Bunay. He would not call me Anas, he would say Ya Unais. You see? Which means it's a beautiful way of calling me. And he used to call me so lovingly. I turned around, I looked at him, he says, Ya Unais, do you remember what I told you? He said, yes. Uh, I'm going, I'm going, I'm going just now, don't worry. Oh, Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And he says he was smiling. According to one narration, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam went to do it himself. And according to another, that was just a beautiful reminder. But all this was lesson for us. Today we have people who are serving us. And subhanallah, the way we treat them, let's revisit it. Otherwise, what is the point of speaking about Anas ibn Malik radiallahu an? He says, Wallahi, Wallahi, ma masastu khazzan wala dibajan wala hariran aliyana min kaffi rasulillahi sallallahu alayhi wasallam. He says, I had the opportunity of shaking Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam's hand so many times. And I, I've never felt anything, whether it is silk or any soft material, softer than the palm of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It was so soft and pleasant when he shook your hand, you could feel, subhanallah. This was a miracle of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Then he mentions another miracle. He says, Wallahi ma shamam tu miskan, wala ambaran, wala rihan, atyaba min araqi rasulillahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He says, Wallahi, I have never smelt. I have never smelt any perfume, musk or amber or any other perfume more beautiful in scent than the perspiration of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and his sweat. Subhanallah. It was such that just to smell it would give you a scent that was better than any perfume ever. And Anas ibn Malik bears witness and so do other companions of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam bear witness. This was a miracle of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So... Anas ibn Malik radiallahu an, he was from amongst those who learnt, he watched, he saw, he fulfilled. And at the same time, he was taught things by Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that no one else was taught because he was with him all the time. And Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam knew that this message is going to go further, right up to the end of the ummah, which means up to the time of qiyamah, the end of time today. We are sitting 1435 years later and we are talking about the same qualities of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Where did we get them from? Well, I can tell you. If you look at the ahadith of Anas ibn Malik radiallahu anhu, they were at par with those of Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu, Abdullah ibn Umar and the others radiallahu anhum jami'an. He narrated so many ahadith that the narrators make mention of 2280 hadith quite easily. From those 180 are agreed upon by both Bukhari and Muslim. Rahimahumallah. And from amongst those, 80 of those, Bukhari has them separately from Muslim. And another 90 Muslim has separately from Bukhari. So if you were to add those three figures, those are just in the Sahihain. Meaning in the two most powerful books after the Quran. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness. Anas ibn Malik ibn Nadr. He was to receive such a high status because his mother was a concerned Muslim. So it brings us back to the 
upbringing that is given by a mother in the home, wallahi, what she shows a keen interest in from the early ages of her children, so the children will show similar interests. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help our mothers and fathers, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us as mothers and fathers to be exemplary to our own children. She had the love and it was passed through to her son. And as a result, the son be became known as one of the greatest of the companions of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. He had the honor of serving Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam for 10 years. So much so that later on, subhanallah, later on the companions and the others and the tabi'een, he had thousands of students. If you look at the list of students of Anas ibn Malik radiallahu anhu, because he lived so long and he traveled far and wide, you would find he has so many students. It is reported that more than any other of the companions of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa were the students of Anas ibn Malik radiallahu anhu. He lived up to the age of 103 and he died in the year 93 Hijra. 93 years after the Hijra. And he was the last to die or to pass away from amongst those who witnessed both Qiblas. Do you know what that means? That means when Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam arrived in Medina Munawwara, he was a young boy. They used to face Jerusalem in prayer. And after that, it shifted to Mecca. He witnessed both of those. And he was the last from amongst who witnessed both of those Qiblas to pass away. May Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala grant us a decent life. And may He make us people whom... When others speak of us after we've died, at least they say good words. And may they say, Rahmatullahi alayhi, may Allah have mercy on him. Now, where did Anas ibn Malik get this from? Whilst he was serving Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa he received a lot of dua from him. He received a lot of supplication for him. One of the main supplications that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa made for him, Allahumma rzuquhu malan wa walada wa barik lah. Oh Allah, grant him wealth because this man is in my service. Give him wealth. People are worried about money. Here is Muhammad وسلم, saying, Oh Allah, give this young boy wealth and give him children. Subhanallah. And give him blessings in what you have given him. He was the richest from the Ansar after some time. Later on, at the time of Abu Bakr and Umar, radiallahu anhum, he was known as the richest from the Ansar. A little bit later, he became the richest from amongst the Ansar. The Ansar meaning those of Medina Munawwara. Radiallahu anhum jami'an. And guess what? That dua that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa made for children for Anas ibn Malik, he says himself that my children, grandchildren, and my progeny, in my life I have seen more than 100 of them. Subhanallah. Anas ibn Malik radiallahu anhu. Young boy serving Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa Look at the dua. My brothers and sisters, make dua for your children. Supplicate, ask Allah for your children and the children of others. And for one another too. Do not underestimate the power of a prayer. Here was a man. If we today were to put our children in the service of Islam, we would probably say, well, he's going to live a pauper and die a pauper because when you serve Islam, you cannot even afford to buy a proton. Allahu Akbar. May Allah forgive us. But at the same time, we don't understand. The owner of sustenance is Allah. You serve Him and believe me, it does not mean you divorce yourself from the worldly life. No, but it does mean that Allah will provide for you. And it depends what you want. If we become people who are quite greedy and so on, perhaps we will continue running behind this worldly life and it continues running faster than us. We never catch it up until we fall into the pit known as the grave. Allahu Akbar. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not do that to us. So let's listen to some of the advice of Anas ibn Malik. And before we get there, he says, Wallahi, I served Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam for 10 years. He never ever slapped me, number one. He never swore me, number two. He never frowned at me. Imagine someone serving you. I was sitting and reading this and thinking, how do I treat those who work with me or for me, who serve me? Have I ever frowned at them? If I have, where am I with the sunnah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Perfect example. لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ أُسْوَةٌ حَسَنَةٌ لِمَنْ كَانَ يَرْجُ اللَّهَ وَالْيَوْمَ الْآخِرِ وَذَكَرَ اللَّهَ كَثِيرًا Indeed, you have a perfect example. 
in the life of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in the person of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, for those who remember Allah, for those who are looking forward to the meeting with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, those who are looking forward for the hereafter, there is an example in Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Here he is. No swear words to those who worked for him. Never did he frown, never did he slap. And he taught me so much. He told me that when you see something here, you do not go and relate it to others. Now we learn this in our houses. Sometimes our own children, family members, a spouse, something happens in your home, you phone your mother. First thing, mom, this is what happened. So your mother is controlling your home by remote control, you know, without batteries also, mashallah. And it works. May Allah protect us. You have a problem, hold it to yourself. You are an adult. It depends how serious the matter is. If it is a very serious matter, you have every right to seek assistance. But don't just phone those or contact those whom emotionally they may give you advice that is detrimental for you. A lot of us, as soon as someone complains, hey, my husband did this or my wife did this, they say, go home. Go home? That's why the marriages are breaking. Everyone has some form of difficulty sometimes. Try and make it work. See what is the matter. You know, address it. Let's address it in a humane way and so on. Anyway, this is just a few... Or this is just a little bit of advice that I'm perhaps adding here. But learning from Anas ibn Malik, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told him certain things you don't narrate. You don't just go out and say, oh, this is what happened and you start describing things that obviously would not be of any relevance to anyone outside. But subhanallah, whatever there was to be given to us was given by Anas ibn Malik radiallahu anhu. So he says, subhanallah, one day, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told me, Ya Bunayya, O oh my beloved son. Imagine calling him, O oh my son. O oh my son. If you can get up in the morning and sleep in the evening without single ill feeling in your heart for your brethren, then do that. If you do that, you will be following my path, my sunnah. That means clean your heart every morning and evening. Take out hatred, jealousy and whatever you have from your heart for your brethren. It's a teaching of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he says, if you follow my sunnah, that means you love me. And if you love me, you will be in paradise with me. Subhanallah. So Anas ibn Malik radiallahu anhu says, on one occasion, I even told him, O messenger, I will come and see you in the akhirah. Will you intercede on my behalf? Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, you will find me. You will find me either here or there, mentioning different places on the day of qiyamah. Either you will find me by the scales or you will find me by the bridge or you will find me by the hawd, which is the pond. And believe me, Anas ibn Malik later used to say, when I see him, I will tell him, O messenger, this is your small servant, Unais. I am here begging that you intercede on my behalf. Subhanallah. May Allah grant us all the intercession of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and may he allow us all a drink from the hawd. So this is the man, Anas ibn Malik. He says, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told me, when you enter your home, greet with assalamu alaikum, your family, and greet them often. It is a means of barakah for you and your family, a means of blessing. A lot of us leave home, no one knows we've left home. We come back, no one knows we came back. Get into the habit of saying assalamu alaikum, even before you go to recline. When you get up in the morning, greet your family members. It is barakah, a teaching that we were taught from Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, brought by Anas ibn Malik radiallahu an. Then Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, subhanallah, had given this man so much, like we said a few moments ago, he was a gifted person, so gifted that he made mention of certain things in his life. He says, the happiest day in my life was the day that I met Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and the saddest day in my life was the day that he passed away. The first time I saw him, happiest day. The last time I saw him, the saddest day. Subhanallah. And he lived for many years and subhanallah, he served the Muslimin. And at the same time, he has so many ahadith that he narrated of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa He had an issue with one of the uh, governors of Medina Munawwara at one time, he, whose name was Hajjaj ibn Yusuf al-Thaqafi. And he wrote a letter. Instead of responding to Hajjaj ibn Yusuf al-Thaqafi, he wrote a letter to the Amir al muminin at the time, who was Abdul Malik ibn Marwan. Rahimahullah, complaining. And immediately the response came to Hajjaj ibn Yusuf al-Thaqafi who apologized to Anas ibn Malik. But Anas ibn Malik radiallahu anhu left for Basra. And he passed away in Basra, like we said, in the 93rd year of Hijrah at the age of 103. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us all. Brothers and sisters, we have another beautiful story that we'll, we will be rendering this evening. 
a companion who is not very well known. His name is not amongst the top names of the companions, but his story is one of the most touching stories we will have. By the name of Saeed ibn Amir al-Jumahi, radiyallahu an. What is his story? He says, I was a young man in Mecca, and after the Battle of Badr, I noticed the people of Quraysh had got hold of a certain companion of Muhammad وسلم, by the name of Khubayb ibn Adi radiyallahu an. And I was a young boy in Mecca, not yet a Muslim. This was after the Battle of Badr. And they were dragging him and they took him to Tan'im. Tan'im today is where Masjid Aisha uh, is or Masjid Umrah they call it. It's a place known as Tan'im just on the outskirts of the Haram in Mecca. So he says they were dragging him, they were beating him and they were about to execute him. They had a little crucifix which they wanted to hang him on and so on and they said we are going to kill this man because of who has been killed in the battle of Badr and yet Khubayb ibn Adi was an innocent man the only sin he committed was he was a follower of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam so Saeed ibn Amir al-Jumah he says I was watching I was a young man and I saw as they beating him up he asked them one question he says look before you hang me before you execute me can I read two units of prayer, two raka'at of prayer? They said, okay. So he, he washed with a bit of water. And Saeed says, Saeed ibn Amir al Juma. he says, we were all watching him. And he faced the qibla. And he started his salah. And he read a beautiful salah without any worry. Like nobody's going to beat him up ever. And so he took his time. He finished the salah. And he looks at the people of Quraysh who were now ready with their knives their knives and their axes and whatever. And he looked at them and said, you know, I would have lengthened my prayer had I not been worried that you would start saying this man is scared of death because it is not death that I am scared of. It's the way I die, subhanallah. The way I die, meaning he wants Allah to be pleased with him. That's why he read his salah. Anyway, the people were shocked. This man, they only told him, disbelieve in Muhammad. He says, no, no ways. So they started cutting up his organs whilst he was alive. Na'udhu Billah. Men, women, everyone involved in this. And Saeed says, I was in the forefront. I didn't engage in it. But just when they were about to hang him, finally when he was about to die, I heard him say a few words. They asked him a question. Wouldn't you like Muhammad وسلم, to be in your place? And he said, Wallahi, no matter what you do to me, and no matter what happens to me, I would not allow even a thorn to prick Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa And this Saeed ibn Amir says, I was shocked. This man loves the other man so much. There must be something about it. And he says, as he was dying, he says, Allahumma ahsihim adada, waqtulhum badada, wala tatruk minhum ahada. Oh Allah, it's a dua that was made by Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa previously as well. And this dua was repeated here by Khubayb ibn Adi radiyallahu anhu saying, Oh Allah, gather all of these, punish all of them and don't leave even one of them for what they are doing. Who are those? The people of Quraysh. So this man, Saeed ibn Amir says, the story was over, the people of Quraysh went back, they killed the man, he was gone, but I couldn't sleep. When I stand up, I see this man, Khubayb ibn Adi in front of me. When I sleep, I dream of him, I have nightmares, I get up. When I'm walking, I remember his words and it harassed me so much. And I thought to myself that this cannot be something simple. There is some deep belief behind this. What is it? The love that he has for his religion must be meaning that this religion has something deep in it. Because if people had a slight doubt in their belief, they would have given it up. And the love he has for this man, he can only be a messenger. Because if it was any ordinary person, even a father would not do this for the son, and the son would not do this for the father. Subhanallah. So he says, I started asking myself, there must be something from the heavens that, you know, that, is, that has come. And one day I got up because I could not take all these thoughts anymore. And I stood in front of Quraysh and told him, Oh Quraysh, I free myself from what you did to Khubayb ibn Adi some time back. And I, I am not a part of you anymore. The idols you are worshipping are wrong. I am going to Medina. And I accept the message of Muhammad sallallahu This was our man, Saeed ibn Amir al-Jumahi. It shook him to the core. He went to Al-Madinah al munawwara And mashallah, he spent time there. It is reported that he took part in the battle of Khaybar and whatever happened thereafter. Then, here comes his story. 
He lived during the time of Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anhu and Umar al-Farooq radiallahu anhu and he used to advise them. He told Umar ibn al-Khattab one day, Oh Umar, be careful of how you treat your people and be careful you have been made an Amir. You need to make sure that you fulfill your responsibilities and so on. They used to know him as a very pious man who was not interested in the worldly material life. So one day Umar ibn al-Khattab calls him and says, You know what? I want to appoint you as the governor of Hems. Hems is in Syria today. May Allah grant peace and stability in all the Muslim lands. Amin. So this man says, no, I will not be the governor of Hems. Sa'id ibn Amir al-Jumahi radiallahu an. So Umar ibn al-Khattab says radiallahu an, you people appointed me as an Amir and now you don't want to support me and you don't want to do what I'm telling you to do. So he decided, okay, let me go to Hems. So Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu says, okay, we're going to send you a monthly stipend, a salary. He says, I don't need a salary. I am a person whom whatever I have is enough. If you give me something, it's going to be excess. Rather, you leave it in Baytul Mal, you know, with the wealth of the Muslims and give it to the poor. So he refused to take anything. So what happened is, after some time, subhanallah, Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu met a few people from Hims. And he told them, we want you to write the names of the poorest of people from amongst you so that perhaps we can send them some wealth. So the people of him started writing names and the names came to Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu an. And from amongst them, he saw Saeed ibn Amir al-Jumahi. He said, who is this Saeed ibn Amir? So they said, he is the governor. What? He is the governor. His name is from amongst the poorest of the lot. Yes. So immediately Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu an, who sent him 1,000 gold coins and, in a, and wrote a note for him, sent it to him. It got to him. In him, subhanallah, something worth making mention of Saeed ibn Amr al-Jumahi radiallahu an. When he saw the note and the coins, he said, Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un. So his wife tells him, did the Amir pass away? No, something worse than that. So his wife says, did the Muslims lose in battle? No, something worse than that. So the wife says, well, what has happened? He says, materialism has entered my life in order to destroy my hereafter. Subhanallah. She did not know about the coins yet. So she said, well, why don't you get rid of it? Now he looks at her and says, will you help me get rid of it? She says, by all means. So then he said, here's the thousand coins. And she looked at it and she said, well, now I have to help him because you know, Subhanallah, he was a man. Wallahi, we will cry when we hear the next part of his story. He was a man who served his family so much that we have to learn a lesson from it. We think we're a big deal, CEOs of companies and so on. We come home and give instruction. Listen to what the governor of Hems did. Anyway, he put that money into little, little pouches and he distributed it amongst the poor in Hems. Subhanallah. Then Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu came up to Asham in the 15th year of Hijra, And it is reported that again, he, he went to Hims and so on or some parts of Asham, and he asked the people of Hims, how is your Khalifa? How is your Amir, the, the one I sent to you? How is he? So they complained a lot. So he, he decided to call Saeed ibn Amir al-Jumahi. The people have complaints about you. And the people were seated, and he brought this man in front of them. He was a very calm, collected man. So Amir al-Mu'mineen says, right, what are your complaints? They mentioned four things. Point number one. This man does not come out to us until late in the morning. You know, when the sun is almost in, in its zenith, that's when, they, that's when he comes out. Meaning late in the morning. He doesn't come out early. Complaint number one. So, Umar radiallahu anhu says, O Saeed ibn Amir radiallahu anhu, what do you have to say? He says, O Amir, I don't have a servant at home. So, every morning... I cook the food and I make sure that I bake the bread and I make sure that I've done everything in the house. Then I make my wudu and then I come out to see the people. Wallahi, they were stunned. They were shocked because even the poor of the lot, they didn't cook on their own. This man used to cook for his family and for everyone else. And he was the governor of him, Saeed ibn Amir al-Jumahi radiallahu an. So Umar ibn al-Khattab looked at them and said, what's the other complaint you have? They said, the second complaint is at night, he doesn't respond. When we have a problem at night, we knock his door, he never answers his door. So Saeed ibn Amr al-Jumah, he says, Wallahi, O oh Umar, I don't want to disclose what I do. But I just, want you to say, I just want you to know that the day is for my people and the night is for Allah. 
which means the man is in prayer. What do you want him to do? Someone knocks. You know, today we, we ring the phone. Someone doesn't answer. We get so irritated. We think they are ignoring us. We start a war. In fact, we stop talking to them for the rest of our lives without knowing the man was probably in the loo. Sorry, not the loo, because nowadays they answer the toilet even in the loo. May Allah grant us forgiveness. Wallahi. What bad habits do we have? So this was Saeed ibn Amir al-Jumahi. So he looked at them and said, what's your next complaint? They said, Wallahi, this man, one or two days of the month, he just doesn't come out at all. So Saeed ibn Amir al-Jumahi says, you know, O Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu an, I've only got one pair of clothes and that's what I'm wearing here. So one of the days I need to wash the clothing. So I wash it and then I have to wait until it dries. Subhanallah. When it dries, then I can wear it. And by that time it's evening. So I come out the next day. Subhanallah. They were stunned, completely taken aback. The people of Hims. And what happened is, what is your next complaint, O people? So the last complaint, they said, sometimes this man, he loses concentration whilst we're talking to him. And it's as though he's unconscious for a little while. Then he gains consciousness and he asks us what we said. And this being our governor is something that is wrong with this man. So they, he asked Saeed ibn Amir al-Jumahi al that what is your answer for this? He says, Wallahi, O oh Umar, I can never forget a certain day in my life when one of the companions of Muhammad sallallahu by the name of Khubayb ibn Adi radiallahu an was killed in front of me in Quraysh. And he described the whole story. I'm not going to repeat it here because I've just said it now. And Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu was in tears. And the Sahaba were in tears. And the people of Hims were in tears. He says, Wallahi, I worry all the time I was with him. Why didn't I help him? I wonder if Allah will forgive me for that day when I allowed one of the companions to be martyred in front of me. And that was Khubayb ibn Adi radiallahu anhu. And subhanallah, this was the man this was the man, Saeed ibn Amir al-Jumahi radiallahu anhu, worth talking about. Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu hugged him. They cried. And later on, Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu sent him another thousand coins. And this time his wife said, Alhamdulillah, we've got a thousand coins. You no longer need to work, nor do I. We can employ someone. So he says, oh, my beloved wife, why don't we do something even better than that? So she says, what is it? He says, let us distribute this wealth to those who need it more than us. And he definitely did that. They agreed and that's what they did. This was the man. It was worth making mention of him. We have so much lesson from this man. The men, the women and the children of this ummah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless these heroes of ours. This evening we spoke about two of them. Anas ibn Malik radiallahu anhu and Saeed ibn Amir al-Jumahi radiallahu anhu. May Allah be pleased with them and us all. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabina Muhammad. Subhanallah wa bihamdih. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika nashhadu an la ilaha illa ant. Nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk.